Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I am replacing my old non-HEPA dust collector with this new HEPA professional system from Oneida Air Systems. Running some ducting, freeing up a ton of space because my new unit is going to be out in the shed, but that's okay because it is on an RF remote that goes through walls. So you can fully appreciate just how much of an upgrade this is. I want to show you what I've been dealing with is I have all these manual blast gates. Every time I turn a tool on, I have to move something around. I have to move the hose around. I trip on it all the time. My wife laughs at me when she sees me walk around my shop because I'm tripping over hoses all the time. This setup on my planer was really bad. You just see how many chips. I actually used to blame this on the planer. I thought it was just a bad design, but you'll see at the end, the planer is just fine. It's my dust collection system is really just that bad. I was really embarrassed about this short little run of PVC that I had going to my bandsaw and my drill press. Very awkward to drag that hose over there. Turn it on manually. There was always a pool of chips or dust around the bottom of my bandsaw. So everything about this is about to get better. So just wait, especially the table saw. These bags are about as bad as you can have for your lungs. And you can see when you turn it on and off, just plumes of dust that come up. That That's what I'm breathing in for the last couple of years. So stepping up to an Oneida Air Systems Dust Gorilla. It's a five horsepower unit. It is a big unit. Luckily, it's not as big as this pallet because I was a little afraid this wasn't all going to fit in my shed, but it gets a lot smaller once it's all assembled. I don't know how you are when you're assembling something large like this, but I like to take everything out of the boxes so I at least have kind of laid my eyes on it. And when I see it in the instructions, I kind of know where to go. You may be a little bit different, but that's how I like to get started with this. Everything was boxed and packaged really, really, really well. I actually saved all this cardboard and was able to ship a table with it because it was such heavy duty, thick cardboard. This motor housing was in like a bomb proof box. This foam that was like built around the housing was incredible. So really, really, really impressed with the packaging by Oneida. The first thing I did was assemble the legs and they pretty much only go together one way. So it was really easy. I used an impact to attach a lot of the stuff just to speed it up. I have a little socket attachment for my regular DeWalt impact driver and that made things go a lot faster. I just realized I haven't showed you guys my shed yet, which is a whole nother thing in itself. So I am going to have to figure out something to do with all this stuff. And I actually did figure it out already. I'll show you at the end of the video what my shed looks like now. But this took a little bit of doing to make sure I could get that dust collector in there because I already have this big air compressor in there, which is really cool because it's really quiet being that it's outside my shop. But it's going to get pretty tight in there with this dust collector. Oneida has some really good, really accurate diagrams of all the units in the different configurations on their website. And I studied them very, very closely because I was going to be in such a tight space. So I went with the freestanding unit and a 35 gallon drum. They do have a wall mount optional or a 55 gallon drum too, which I actually could have fit in the end. I didn't know how compact it was really going to be, but I like the 35 gallon. It'll be a little bit easier for me to move around. I am a very visual learner, so I want to thank Oneida for having all of the helpful pictures to make sure I got the weather stripping on the correct side of the bolts because I would hate to get this thing all the way assembled and then realize I had the weather stripping on the wrong side because it actually was pretty critical in all the aspects of putting this together to make sure you have the weather stripping on the correct side of the bolts, which wasn't always on the same side. You'll see me use the impact a lot when I'm putting this together, and that's really just to get the long bolts started and most of the way through. I always tightened it by hand with a socket and a ratchet. These little spring clips were kind of a pain to get on until I realized that you could hammer them on. And these are pretty critical placement and you'll see why in a little bit when I go to attach the motor assembly. So make sure you get those lined up just perfectly. You can attach the fan housing in a ton of different orientations, which again for me was super critical being in my small little shed. So Oneida again had really helpful diagrams for making sure I had that fan housing attached in the proper orientation for my little shed. And as far as the bolt attachment, it was all pretty easy. Everything just kind of clicked together. Again, you'll see me use the impact, but I always made sure to tighten it with the ratchet and didn't just hammer it down. I'd be afraid of over tightening or breaking a bolt off. Up to this point, this has been a really pretty easy assembly. It's essentially like putting together a barbecue up to this point, but things are about to get really interesting because I have to find a way to get this super heavy five horsepower motor assembly on top of this dust collector. And all my friends, most of them live out of town, they all work, so I gotta do this by myself in my shed in the middle of the day. So one thing you wanna do before you do this is test all of these bolts out, because if you get that on top there and those clips didn't line up, you're gonna be in a bad way. So I'll let you watch me struggle with this and don't do it the way I do it. I don't know why I did it this way, but it worked in the end, but do not copy this idea.
I know sometimes we say don't do it this way, but we really expect you to do it that way anyway. I genuinely, genuinely do not recommend doing it that way. I don't know how it ended up working. I could have really damaged the unit, could have damaged myself, but it works now and I am happy that it is in there. You guys always seem to have better stories than me, so let me know in the comments if you've done something like that that probably wasn't a very good idea, but in the end it worked out okay. Maybe you moved a 20-inch planer in a Toyota Tercel, something like that. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you kind of binds you've gotten yourself into and if it worked out or maybe it didn't work out. You might be thinking to yourself, this guy has a YouTube woodworking channel. He probably got this unit for free. I bet Oneida sent it to him and he didn't have to pay anything. But guess what? You are absolutely right. I did get this unit for free. I reached out to someone at the Oneida marketing department and it took like four months and he emailed me back and he said, are you still interested? And I said, absolutely. What are the terms? And he said, we just want you to make a video on it. Give us your honest feedback. They didn't tell me I had to give it a positive review or anything like that. I said, absolutely. So this is a free unit. It is sponsored by Oneida, but there was no conditions or terms to me making this video or what had to go in it. So really cool of them to collaborate with me, with me on this project. And I am really, really excited to get this unit up and running. If you don't know, Oneida is kind of the industry standard in dust collection. I have some good friends with uh, Wayward Grain you might have heard of or Hallman Woodworks. They are professional shops and all they run is Oneida and they paid for their units where I didn't have to pay for mine. So this is the one to get if you want the absolute best. It's a HEPA system, which if you don't run a HEPA dust collector, you're not really running a dust collector as far as your lungs are concerned. You just collect the chips. It's all that fine dust is what's going to get you cancer in the end. So all Oneida units are HEPA certified. So if you can't fit a big unit like this, check out some of their smaller units because they are, again, the industry standard in dust collection. I'm going to kind of give you the Cliff Notes version of this ducting because I do have a full duct video coming out in probably a few weeks, maybe even a month. So I won't drag you through the entire duct process. This is more on the dust collection for this particular video. But what I did cut through my exterior wall, I had to line it up, which was a little bit tricky to make sure it lined up right up with that port. It took me a little while to figure out how to run that 90 and have it supported just right. And then kind of everything went pretty well. It this is over at my table saw. It was actually kind of a fun process once I learned the kind of the fundamentals of ducting. It was again, kind of hard doing it by myself. Had to rig up some things that would have been much, much easier with two people, but stay tuned for this video coming out in a few weeks, maybe a month. I do have some automatic blast gates that are back ordered right now. So I'm using my old temporary manual blast gates. And this was a big upgrade. I've made some uh, six inch spiral tube elbow into my new attachment for my planer. So I think that will help a lot in addition to the incredible upgrade in suction that I'm getting from the new Oneida system. Okay, that planer is unbearable to listen to, but the dust collection is really nice to listen to and really nice to work with. You can see how well it works on my planer compared to how it used to be. There's essentially no chips left. Here is an old board from my old dust collector just spitting chips out. Here is a new one. You can actually zoom in and see that it pulls chips back out. They start to come out and then it sucks them back in. So could not be happier with how it works on my planer. Table saw is probably the hardest dust collection to really get all the dust chips because so many of them come out the top. They don't even go into the bottom of the table saw. So you really need an overarm dust collector, which I would like to get eventually, but I can't add on with my current router table setup. The band saw was an incredible improvement as well. You can see just how much suction there is. It about pulls those horizontal. And I always had kind of a pool of dust around the base of my bandsaw, and I ran a bunch of test cuts just to see. And for some reason, I wasn't expecting it to be completely sterile inside. And when I opened it up, it was just like a surgical floor. So bandsaw, just like everything else, incredible, incredible improvement over my old dust, dust collector. I feel like most people ignore dust collection on their drill press, and I've always run it to some degree, just not this degree. So check this out. This is a two inch bit. And it is not getting every single chip, but an incredible amount of them. I almost forgot I should give you guys a tour of the shed now that I have my dust collector complete and all of my junk back in here. And you can see I was able to get a lot of the little stuff between the studs, just the spray paint and the fertilizer, stuff like that. The bulk of the large stuff went overhead in this new shelf that I built, which I am super happy with. That saved me a ton of space. 
while I was doing this, I actually added these semi-flexible airlines throughout my entire shop. And I'll have a lot more info on these when I do my ducting video too. But overall, this Oneida is going to make my life so much easier. And it got me thinking that you guys know I like to give credit to people that make it all the way to the end of the video. So start your comment with which tool or object makes your life easiest. It doesn't have to be for woodworking. It can be in the kitchen. But that way, I will know you watch the entire video and I promise I will answer all of your questions or comments first. Anyway, thanks so much. Please subscribe for more videos just like this one.